So you know what Trino is, but you have some other questions and you're curious if it's the right fit for you. Does it make sense for my tech stack? Why would I want to use it? Is it right for me? Why am I here? At its core, Trino is a SQL query engine built for ad hoc analytics. It can do other things, and we will get to those, but its bread and butter is fast analytics at scale. Trino is at its best when you have a lot of data, you have people who want to query that data with SQL, and they want to be able to do that regularly with different queries and not have to wait long to get their query results back. Getting results back fast means that it's easier to iterate on your query results and drill down into your data to find the exact answers and insights that you're looking for. Interactive analytics with Trino means that you can write and run a query, edit and run it again, and edit and run it a third time, even within the span of just a minute, making sure that you're able to find exactly what you're looking for. Or if you're like me, it means that your engineers can prioritize their other work or that, and then look at that newly created mountain of telemetry data 10 minutes before the meeting and come prepared with answers to discuss how that new feature is doing. The best part is that all of that works basically no matter where you're storing your data, because Trino connects to a ton of different data sources. And that actually brings us to the second key use case for Trino, federating your data. It's challenging to get all of your data into one central location. Even with data centralization as a goal, it's very easy for your data to end up spread across several different databases, systems, and locations due to business needs. And that's not even considering acquisitions that may leave you juggling two entirely different data and tech stacks. Your data engineers may work hard on pipelines to try to create a central warehouse where all of your data can live, but the unfortunate reality is that once you reach a certain scale, data centralization no longer is feasible, and there's very little you can do to change that. So when it becomes time to try to query and analyze your data, despite it being spread across these different locations, that can turn into a giant headache. And that's where data federation comes in. Trino federates your data by connecting directly to all of your underlying data sources and providing a unified SQL interface on top of them, allowing you to join together your data with a single query. Instead of needing to worry about pipelines and migrations, you can simply query your data exactly where it already is. Instead of needing to worry about a disorganized mess of centralized data, all of it is now just one Trino query away. Pretty neat, right? But instead of disorganized data, let's say you have a lot of data and you're worried about the scale of it. You know which data you care about, you can get it relatively organized, and you've heard of these cool things called data lakes to store it in. But once it's there and you've got it in your storage, you still need something to query the terabytes or petabytes or even exabytes of data. Believe it or not, this is actually where Trino is at its best. On modern data lakes, Trino can run blazingly fast, enabling ad hoc analytics for even huge amounts of data. If you run Trino with Iceberg, you can maintain those same interactive, quick turnaround times on your queries for petabytes or even exabytes of data. Here at Starburst, we like to refer to this Trino and Iceberg tech stack as the ice house, and you can check the description for links on why it works so well. The final major trick Trino has up its sleeve is its fault-tolerant execution mode. It's a mouthful to say, but it's incredibly useful. When you're handling batch ELT or ETL workloads, you tend to care less about the blazing fast speeds and more about the reliability and persistence of your engine in order to make sure that the work you're trying to do gets done. With fault tolerance enabled on your Trino cluster, you're able to make exactly that trade-off, sacrificing some speed in order to gain that persistence, making sure that you can move huge amounts of data with one single query, which enables and simplifies that process. Now, full disclosure, this is a relatively newer feature for Trino, and it's not the first thing we use to sell you on it. However, if you're already interested in Trino for one of the other reasons discussed in this video, the fact that it can switch up and handle batch workloads can save you the massive amount of time, effort, and hassle of setting up and maintaining a different query engine for your batch processing. It simplifies your tech stack and gives you a situation in which Trino can do everything for you. So to recap, Trino is great for ad hoc analytics, especially at huge scales on data lakes. It's good at data federation, and it's good at switching up to handle batch workloads as well. As always, Check out the description for links and more information.